From a mountaintop deep in the Gobi Desert, it is still possible to see the shoreline of an ancient sea. Millions of years ago, the Himalayans pushed up to the west, separating this inland body of water from the ocean, and now only the shoreline remains, a testament to the forces of nature. Today, the Gobi Desert is undergoing yet another transition. This one is the product of human modifications. As Mongolians look to the west and build a similar economy, there is a great need for infrastructure and resource extraction. One unintended result has been to bring several well-known native animals, such as the wild camel and Gobi bear, to the brink of extinction. Now another less studied species is declining rapidly, the Asiatic wild ass, known in Mongolia as the Hulan. Scientists from around the world are alarmed, but the Mongolian herders who live in the Gobi Desert see the Hulan very differently. The reason for this conflict is because the Hulan eat the pasture intended for the livestock in the wintertime. The Hulan is a rare animal, which is listed in the Red Book as endangered. It appears that there are many Hulan here, but that is because the population is centered in this region. In 2005, Dr. Petra Kaczynski, a wildlife biologist, and Dr. Dennis Sheehy, an herbivore ecologist, teamed up to explore the world of the Hulan and find out what the future holds for them. Most of the remaining Hulan in the world are found in Mongolia and this area of Omnigov and Dorn, Dorngov are the primary remaining population center for the Hulan. The most recent estimate that that's around that's from the fall of 2003 when there was a coordinated effort by the Mongolian Academy of Science and they came up with a population figure of about 20,000 for all of Mongolia. So the average um, recruitment is probably something around 10% and the offtake is about 20% of the population. So we are probably looking at a 10% decrease in the population at the moment. The herders do not like the Hulan that much. They think the Hulan kill plants and steal pasture from their livestock. This makes them feel that Hulan should be killed or removed from their areas. The Hulan has a relative called the Shavalsky's horse, or Taki. It offers a grim lesson about the fragility of species survival in a hostile environment. The Great Gobi Bee Strictly Protected Area was established in 1975. It was here that the last Shavalsky's horse was spotted. Throughout the 1970s and 1980s, this ancestor of the Mongolian horse was extinct in the wild. In 1992, a reintroduction project was initiated with the goal of bringing the Taki from international zoos back into their Mongolian homeland. Today, 95 Taki again roam the pastures in the Great Gobi Bee, but the restoration came at a substantial cost. Unlike the Taki, the Hulan still sustain themselves naturally, giving conservationists a huge head start in preventing their extinction. We have to act now because we still have a good population here, so I think we really have to be careful this does not happen. In August 2005, a research expedition was ready to depart from Ulaanbaatar, the capital of Mongolia. Roughly half the population of the country lives here. This trip would be the last one that Petra and Dennis would be able to make before their research funding ran out. So they were eager to get started. Uh, we got lost from the other Jeep. Uh, so we're 
trying to find the other jeep. They're probably trying to find us. I think we need to go back there anyway. To the where the road split. We're not lost. We know exactly where we are. They're lost. If you find a road, particularly in the Gobi, it's wise to follow it. Or you can get stuck. Dennis's team was headed south to Dorn Gobi to study the Hulan habitat. As they leave Ulaanbaatar behind, the government's efforts to transition the herders from their pastoral lifestyle to commercial livestock production is less and less evident. Compared with fully developed countries, very little of the central government is visible outside of the cities. The people and the landscape exist much as they have for thousands of years. Okay. <laughs> The, the herder still really doesn't understand producing for a market. Oftentimes he's taken advantage of by what we call traders that come out here and purchase livestock or surplus product from the herder. You have to remember that most of the herders are still subsistence type of herders. They're producing food for themselves, for the families, and they're essentially living off their livestock to do it. If you get a severe drought followed by a severe winter, oftentimes these herders lose all of their livestock, let alone their lives sometimes. 